Alrighty, so in today's video, we will be reviewing Armin Beta for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's jump right in there. So first of all, what is Armbian? What type of operating system is this? Well, Armbian is basically a base that is built on top of Debian or Ubuntu. So they want to build on top of either of these operating systems, make them secure or usable for single board computers. And they want to have a universal operating system between all of the different single board computers made by different manufacturers, which I personally think is a pretty cool goal. It makes sense to be able to have one operating system and I like what they're doing. So I'm really excited to see it officially being developed for the Raspberry Pi 4, but in this video I am running a nightly build. So let's jump into how to install this. So I actually learned how to install this from YouTuber Nico D. He made a video about this about a month ago I think, and it really was a good video detailed and everything. I will link this below in the description. but. He gives this link to nightly Armbian images. And I went ahead, I first actually downloaded the Cinnamon desktop one. I installed it, it just wasn't usable. I wouldn't recommend it. So I went ahead, I downloaded the XFC desktop one, flashed it with Raspberry Pi Imager, and I am using USB stick. So it does boot from USB. It's a nice feature. I booted up on my Raspberry Pi 4. I went through the setup process. It was pretty simple. You just had to select either ZSH or bash for your terminal create users and everything like that it was pretty simple it worked well and I was into the desktop there were quite a few upgrades and the upgrade process was pretty slow it might have even taken around 30 minutes because there were like over a hundred packages to upgrade so that wasn't the most welcoming but Still, I got Armbian XFC up and running on my Raspberry Pi 4, and so far it seems fairly good. So let's jump into the desktop and test some things out. So one thing I like to do on all of my operating system reviews is before we're doing anything, check the system resource usage on our fresh boot. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to open up applications, go over to terminal emulator, and we are going to want to type htop to see our thing so i'm going to type in htop right here and on idle boot right now we are using 472 megabytes of ram i guess it's okay for an xfce desktop all cores are low everything looks fairly good what with our system resource usage it's definitely not too much ram especially we are using a light more lightweight desktop like xfce so you would expect lower ram usage nothing like gnome or kde so that's a nice wel welcoming experience. So we can go control Z to exit and then we can type in Neo fetch. So like I said before, this is based on Ubuntu Jammy. So this is Army and Jammy. It's a 64 bit operating system. We're on 5.15.7 kernel and we come pre-installed with 1667 packages. That is a little bit much and like i said on the setup process you can select bash instead of zsh but i wanted to give it a go so i did select zsh everything else is here so there is a little bit of theming by default by the army and team but you can do some theming yourself if you like obviously this is linux so neofetch looks pretty awesome so we can exit there next let's go through the pre-installed applications see what comes pre-installed see is it is anything good so we'll click applications so we first of all have run program which allows us to search for applications it's a pretty useful thing like i type in files or file manager no nothing comes up if i type that in nothing really comes up it's called so uh, we'll type in terminal see if that works Terminator, we can type in Terminator and our terminal opens up. So it's a kind of quick access application launcher, but you do have to know the exact name for it to work, which is a little bit sad. So we have Terminal Emulator, which I looked at, File Manager, which is the default XFC file manager, I'm pretty sure. About, yeah, it's Thunar, the default XFCE file manager looks great. We have Web Browser, which is going to be, is it Chromium or Firefox? Let's see. It's Chromium, so it comes pre-installed with Chromium. That's awesome to see. We will look more into that later. We have a mail reader, which is just going to be a mail reader, like Thunderbird or something. 
settings, we have a settings manager, which the settings manager on XFC, I kind of like how it is organized. It's kind of looks like Mac OS because all of the settings are right there. And I mean, I do think it works pretty well. You can find everything fairly easily. And if you can't find something, there is a search bar right here. So I could type in display if I need to find that, if I couldn't find it with my eyes and there it is. The, so the settings manager right here I'd say is pretty intuitive and it works well like you can see so far the operating system it, it's feeling pretty snappy which is awesome. So we don't really need to go through the settings. Accessories it comes with application finder, bulk rename which is going to be rename multiple files. I'm not entirely sure what that is but some of you guys might know what it is. We have caffeine. So caffeine, I know what caffeine does on GNOME. On GNOME, basically, it disables the screensaver. So, go oh, here's caffeine indicator. So, if I launch that, is it gonna add? It? Yeah. So, active basically, I manual control the desktop's idle state. So, yeah, you can either disable sleep mode or not. Sorry for not exactly knowing what it is, but yeah, that's what caffeine does. Because this is also one of my first times going through this, so I'll be going with with it together. We have mouse pad, which is a nice text editor. Notepad QQ, which is also going to be a text editor. If it launches, yeah. So some oh, there is quite a few applications on this operating system that come pre-installed. We have some development applications. I thought it was interesting to see VS Codium come pre-installed in here. But if you do use the application, it's a nice welcoming app. And there is none of Microsoft stuff in here since it's the open source version of VS Code. So we can go back to graphics. We ha it comes pre-installed with GIMP, LibreOffice, Draw, Pinta, and Vunor. Internet, we do come pre-installed with Chromium, FileZilla, Firefox, HexChat, Putty, Rimina, Transmission for Torrents. Multimedia, we come pre-installed with Kazama, Celluloid, MPV, Pulse Audio, System Tray, all those things. Office, we have all of the LibreOffice suite that we need to edit documents. In other, we have Scripsy, which allows you to connect your Android phone to your Raspberry Pi on the near your Android phone screen onto the desktop. For some people, if the if you do enjoy doing that, it's pretty useful. System, here's your system applications like FileMan, no file Gparted, HTOP, Midnight Commander, Printer, Software Updater, Terminator, and all the terminal stuff like that. So sorry for going through this a bit fast, but I don't want to bore you guys. So there definitely is a lot of pre-installed applications on here. And if you are someone who likes that, good for you. But personally, I don't love being bombarded with tons of applications on my desktop. But hey, that's just my personal preference. But next, let's take a look at some of the desktop features. So first of all, it, we come right here with two desktops. So if I switch to this desktop, I could open up something like the file manager. I click this and it's a new desktop with that white white background i kind of like that white a little bit more if i do say so myself so we would open up like a terminal and we could switch between these it's a nice feature it's i guess you could add more if you needed to more desktops but yeah so then we have our time and date indicator and we have logout shutdown restart and stuff like that so this is the XFCE desktop environment. So it is not the most beautiful desktop, you gotta remember, because XFC is more based on performance than looks, but hey, I think it's still, there is definitely still a lot of customizations you could do. So like we go over to settings, we could go over to appearance, and in appearance, you could install more styles, more icons. So we right now we're in Numix. So if I want a Numix circle, I did that, and you see we already have those rounded kernel circles corners sorry and we have like a rounded terminal icon which i kind of like this new mix circle i think that's cool i might leave that on the system for a little bit we have fonts and then we have settings so xfc is a really customizable desktop if we right click we go we can go over to desktop settings and let's see what the included wallpapers are so we have quite a few army and wallpapers there are a lot that one looks interesting here comes Armbian Universal Operating System under construction. That's kind of interesting. That's funny. I'll leave that wallpaper for now. But there's just a little tour of the included applications and what this desktop can do. It's a simple operating system, but I mean, I think that's pretty awesome. So next, let's go over to the web browser and do some testing. So first, I'll open up Chromium and then we'll also run some tests in Firefox to see which one 
actually performs better. All right, so here in Chromium, first of all, I am gonna type Pi4 and see how fast that responds. So that was fairly fast. I have left Chromium open a little bit to just see, to give it some time to load up. But if we scroll down, you see there definitely is a like a one second lag or so, maybe a little less than one second. But that that's just, it's not really, it's not enjoyable to scroll through this. So like if I went over to like pictures, you see I could scroll. You see, it just it's just like slowed up right there, and I could scroll, I could see all these pictures of the Raspberry Pi 4, but it, it just isn't the most enjoyable experience. Like, if we opened up another tab, if we went typed in Amazon.com, let's see how fast that will load up. So, you know, I mean, that's a little bit better than I expected, but still, it's not the best browsing experience that I've ever had on an operating system on the Raspberry Pi 4. And it looks like it just crashed. Wow, I'm, I'm glad I got that on video, but that was a little bit of an odd crash. So let's try to run a YouTube video and see if we can do it without crashing. So I will be going 1080p. I doubt this can even handle that. Even 720p seems like it could be a little bit hard, but I'll give it a chance. We'll see what we can do. After this, I will open up Firefox, try it out Firefox to compare the two. Maybe it will be a little bit better. So right here we have settings. Right now we're at 360p. No one wants to watch a video there. We'll go 720p. So we'll, let's not. There's not even 1080, 1080p on this video. My bad. So we'll scroll to the middle and then I'll do stats for nerds. So on Stats for Nerds, we are dropping 90 out of 300, 148. So yeah, there it, it definitely feels a little bit just unsmooth, the whole experience at 720p. A lot of frames are being dropped. So it definitely is nowhere near the ideal performance that I would like to have. So yeah, I'm going to close that out, especially with that crash. But let's go ahead, open up Firefox and we'll see if Firefox feels any better. I don't really expect it to, but I'll give it a chance. So here we have Firefox. So we'll first type in Pi4. So Google search now, that felt a little better. That smoothing, man. That smoothing feels a little bit of, oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe I spoke too soon, I don't know. We'll go over to pictures, you see, it has a little bit of an issue with loading up the pictures it can't it's like it can't keep up or something but if we typed in amazon.com i'm just going ahead doing the same test as the other browser it seems to take a little bit longer to load up but for the most part i mean it, it feels a little bit better in my opinion just that's my personal experience but i don't know but we will we will try big buck bunny youtube real fast and try that out to see maybe maybe we can get it a little bit better all right so here we have the video playing and if i click this gear icon right here we'll see right now we're also at 360p like we were on chromium that's a little sad but here i change it to 720p where we will right click stats for nerds and i'll scroll like to the middle or so and we'll see how many frames we're dropping so let it play a little bit and right now it says three out of 258 so and it just feels a little smoother I'm, that's a little surprising usually chromium beats firefox in my in like my experience on the raspberry pi it just feels a little bit smoother but no on armbian it seems like if you do want to use armbian firefox is the way to go don't use chromium as of now on the raspberry pi 4 you, firefox can actually play youtube videos they can scroll a little better Firefox seems to be the way to go on Armbian on the Raspberry Pi 4. And one more thing I need to mention before ending this video. So when I opened up NeoFetch back here, does it say our CPU? If I type in NeoFetch, so you might have noticed that my CPU right here says there's four cores at two gigahertz rather than the stock 1.5 gigahertz like my Raspberry Pi should be. And well, I personally did not overclock this. It actually came by default. And I can show you how to disable that if you don't want to do that. So open up your file manager, go over here to file system. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna need to go into boot, 
on the firmware since Ubuntu structure is a little bit different than normal operating systems. Open up the config.txt, give it a second to launch. Oh, it opens up in VS Codium. I don't really want that. I'm gonna just right click and I'm gonna go open with um, mousepad. I like mousepad. We'll do that. And then right here you can see overclock requires decent thermals. So if you don't if you don't have a good fan or something, I just go ahead and delete these things or add hashtag in front of them. Either way will work. But if you don't have a fan on your Raspberry Pi, don't run at 2 gigahertz. Your Raspberry Pi 4 will probably get too hot. So that was just one thing I thought I should mention. So to conclude this video, should you use Armbian Jammy nightly builds on your Raspberry Pi 4 on a daily basis? I would say no, but you can if you want, but definitely this is an operating system to go into and have fun trying to make it run while on the Raspberry Pi 4. It's not gonna run great out of the box, but there definitely is some amazing stuff happening in here. And I am excited to see where this will go on the Raspberry Pi 4. I know they've done amazing work on other single board computers. So I'm excited to see where this goes on the Raspberry Pi 4. And I do think it's promising. I really do think this is a promising operating system. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please that like button below. Any questions about this operating system, any questions about a video I might make or you want me to make anything, just let me know in the comments below. And yeah, so thanks for watching.